What's good, YouTube? It's Gabriel with another Fan TV. Back at you another video. If you like the content in this video, go hit that like button. Like the content of this channel. Please hit the Just subscribe. Just because I'm a fan. That's Kayla in the background. All right, so I'm, I'm going to keep that in. We're going we're gonna to keep rolling. Um, so <laughs> the Ravens rookies officially reported for the first time yesterday, which means that it's officially football season. It felt like we had a long break. We're talking about that, that month month and a half period where it was like it was just top 10 lists no real news nothing that was really felt like it was football related but with the ravens rookies coming back into the building it's football season we're going to get training camp uh preseason games on to regular season action we fully we finally back in football season all right so with that being said with the ravens rookies reporting i want to give my expectations for each rookie this year and the Ravens had a big draft class we're talking about 11 guys so i'm going to go over the expectations of what i expect from each guy this season all right, we're starting with the rookie uh, first round pick, obviously, um, Kyle Hamilton. Now, Kyle Hamilton wasn't supposed to be there at 14, but thank you for the Ravens, he was. This is a player who, as we know, has the, has the capabilities to line up all over the field. All right, slot, you know, blitz him off the edge, linebackers, deep safety, strong safety. So it's going to be a lot for him. Now, what I kind of hope is that the Ravens allow him to almost zero in on one spot. Let him master that position, and then once he gets that down, you can start moving him around more. Because sometimes, I think I like a guy like Isaiah Simmons perfectly with the uh, Cardinals, right? Um, it took him a little bit of adjustment. The Cardinals were moving him around, then they wouldn't put him in one spot. And it took him a while to get just to the league. I think that I don't want that to happen to Kyle Hamilton. I want him to have kind of a singular spot to start off with, master that spot, hone in the craft on that spot, and then once he gets that, you can move him around and use that versatile chess piece. So for Hamilton, um, if he can play 75, 80% of the snaps, uh, get his hands on the ball, whether that's deflecting passes, um, interceptions, it's a good season for Kyle Hamilton. Also, short tackler, because this is something that the Ravens needed. Ravens missed far too many tackles, especially on the back end. So we need a guy like Kyle Hamilton, 6'4", 220, use that frame to get guys on the ground. So if he can do that this season, successful rookie season for Kyle Hamilton. All right. Uh, the second first round pick, Tyler Lindenbaum. Now, at, at center, I'm not going to put too many expectations on him as far as like, oh, he needs to be a pro bowler or all pro, things like that. I mean, you know, obviously he was a quote unquote generational talent at center, but let's be realistic, okay? If he can pick up assignments, pick up the pressure, protect Lamar Jackson, right? Make out calls for any adjustments that he needs to do. And uh, most importantly, in my opinion, snap the ball properly. That's a good season for Tyler Lindebaum. Honestly, it really is. Um, center is a tough position, man, because you're you're essentially like another quarterback, you know, of, of the offensive line. You're making checks, you're making reads. It's a lot on his plate for a center. So, um, all the accolades of Pro Bowls, All Pros, put that to the side for um, you know his future. Right? This is a guy who I, who I expect to be the Ravens center for the next ten years plus. You know, just given his capability and his ability on the field. So, with that being said, a successful season for him, like I said, making adjustments, making reads, protecting Lamar Jackson, snapping the ball properly. He does that, good season for Tyler Lindebaum. All right. Now we into round two, David Ojabo. Now, David Ojabo is hurt, right? I expect him to probably open up the season on the pup list. Um, he's going to miss, have to miss the probably the first six weeks of the season, if I just had to guess. So if he does open it up like that, let's say he comes back week eight, nine. He has eight or nine games left in the season to play. Um, if he can get somewhere between two and five sacks and just be be a nuisance to the offensive line, constantly getting pressure, being in the backfield, that's a good season for, for, for David Ojabo. And also, as an edge player, um, holding the edge for the run. All right? we can't, you can't be a one-dimensional player. You know, we love pass rush specialists, and the Ravens need a pass rush specialist. They really do. But you still want to be able to have a guy where he doesn't need to come off the field. All right. And um, if Ojabo can show that he can, you know, set the edge for the run and also be a, a nuisance in uh, in the pass rush, good season. Good good rookie season. So two to five sacks, good rookie season with David Ojabo. All right. Travis Jones. Now, we're in the third round, 76 pick with Travis Jones. Okay. I got high hopes for Travis Jones. I really do. Um, just because he, he can stop the run from the interior, but he can also rush the passer. 
He has no problem going against centers, guards, double teams on the inside, and wreaking havoc in that in that middle position. Now, the Ravens need an interior pass for a long, long time, okay? Um, right now, we only had Calais Campbell. But this season, we can have Calais Campbell, Travis Jones, and Justin Matabike, all capable of providing inside rush. Now, just on Travis Jones, this is, this, from, in my opinion, this is what he was brought here to do. Now, we already had a guy who was running number 98, like Travis Jones did with Brandon Williams, who was a run stopper, right? The Ravens have run stoppers. Like I said, they got the Calais can do that. They got Michael Pierce. Um, they have other players, uh, Brent Urban. But J Travis Jones, yes, you need to stop the run, of course. But if he can cause an interior pass rush, all the better. Quarterbacks don't like that pressure right in their face. You know, if it's around the edge, while it might not be the greatest, um, at least they can step up, deliver the ball. But if it's right in your face coming straight down the middle, it's hard to avoid that. So if Travis Jones can provide that, go rookie season with Travis Jones. All right, now we're into the fourth round. Okay, so fourth round, um, pick number 110, Daniel Falele. Now, this is probably the only guy I'm going to say this about, but I don't really expect anything from Daniel Falele this season. I really don't, honestly. Um, because, a couple reasons, he's raw, all right? He has to get used to playing um, football at a high level, all right? Obviously, with the Minnesota, he did a good job there, but he's still a young player when it comes to playing football. I think he's only been playing for a couple years, all right? And also his his size, all right, 6'8", 380. He has to get in physical condition to play the game at a high level. So that's his goal for this season. Get in physical condition to be able to contribute next year. If Dan Flurley has to play this year, it's because the Ravens went through several injuries on the offensive line, which is not something that we want to repeat from last year. All right. So hopefully the offensive line can stay healthy, allow Flurley to develop, take a take this year out and come back next year ready to maybe even contend for a starting job next year, all right? That's the expectation with Daniel Fulele, okay? Um, Jalen Armour Davis, um, fourth-round pick, 119. Like, we got a lot of fourth-round picks here, right? So, Jalen Armour Davis is a uh, is a cornerback and kind of in the mold of Anthony Avery. Kind of broke out later, Alabama, had a good year. And now, NFL, playing for Baltimore Ravens, right? So, for Jalen Armour Davis, I want to see that fact that when Say Kyle Fuller needs a breather. He can come in and hold it down. Maybe Marcus Peters needs a breather, and you know Kyle Fuller slides to the outside, and Jalen Armour Davis is in that slot position. He can hold it down and make plays in that slot position. Um, also, I'm going to say this about every defensive back. Tackling. Tackling, tackling, tackling. The Ravens miss too many tackles. So, not just playing coverage, getting the guy to the ground if he happens to catch the ball. Huge. So, if he could do that, good season. All right, the the next fourth round pick, pick one twenty eight, uh, Charlie Kohler. All right, tight end. Now Charlie Kohler is an interesting tight end. The Ravens have, you know, four or five tight ends on the roster. They're probably gonna have to keep four: um, Andrews, Boyle, Kohler, likely. Um, that, that leaves Josh Oliver, to, in my opinion, the odd man out. But anyway, with Charlie Kohler, he has to when he gets his opportunities, um, one he has to be able to block. They're going to ask him to block. Your Ravens tight end. You're going to have to be, you're going to have to be physical with the line scrimmage. Blocking isn't his strong suit right now, but keep working on it. If he can be a decent blocker by the time the season comes and, you know, getting on to the season gets better and better, great. And when the opportunity comes to catch passes, just have short hands, be able to find spots in the zone and make plays. When I see Charlie Kohler play, he's he's good at finding spots in the zone. And I've even seen him cook man coverage. So, He's a good tight end. I feel like he, I said this in the last video, he kind of gets overlooked because of, you know, Isaiah Likely and his explosive talent. But Charlie Kohler can be a good tight end. I don't expect opportunities to be abundant for him. But when they when they come, you know, make make plays here and there. So if he can catch, I don't even know. You know, I mean, 10, 10 passes kind of seems optimistic, honestly. I don't know how much they're going to throw him in the ball. I really don't. Okay, so if he can do something like that, that's fine for Charlie Kohler. Um, next pick, Jordan Stout punter, fourth round pick, 130. Uh, pretty simple for, uh, for Jordan Stout. Just punt the ball effectively. You're, you're, you're replacing one of the, the best punters in NFL history. Um, I would say obviously probably the best punter in Ravens history and Sam Cook. He's going to be training you. He's going to be coaching you up. Follow his lead. And when the Ravens do have to punt the ball, just punt the ball effectively. 
you can see in Santa Cooks in the um, in the end of these last couple of years, the yards were kind of, it, you know, he wasn't kicking in as far, and it was due to his age. So if he can, if Jordan Stout can, you know, boom the ball 45, 47 yards, great, you know, and flip field position, also be another weapon for the Ravens um, when they need it. But you know, for a punter, just just do your job. Honestly, I'm not going to get too deep into that. All right. Um, Fourth round pick, number 139, Isaiah Likely. Now, Isaiah Likely, <laughs> I'm ready to be to be hurt by this player. And it has nothing to do with him. It's about if the Ravens will use him and how they will use him if they do. He has the explosive capability to really be an X factor on this team, an explosive weapon that, if used properly, can really unlock a defense. All right, this is a guy 6'4", 240, when if you cut on any highlight, he's running away from people. All right, at his size, um, Lamar Jackson likes him. The whole, uh, uh, I think I saw Tony Jefferson make a comment about Isaiah Likely. James Poche knows Isaiah Likely because his um, James Poche brother goes to Coastal Carolina or went there, and they were teammates together. Uh, him and Isaiah Likely. So this is a guy that players on the Ravens organization, um, as far as like the, on the players, they recognize his talent. I need Greg Roman and the coaches staff to recognize his talent too and get him on the field. Find a way to do it. Whether it's uh, H back roll, whether it's split out um, in a slot, you know, find a way, be creative, and get Isaiah Likely on the field. Isaiah Likely, I will really love to see him catch. Like I said, I'm I'm optimistic about this guy. If he can really catch 40 passes this year, I know that sounds crazy, but I'm, I think he really has the kind of talent because you know you already got Mark Andrews here, so Mark Andrews is always going to catch his, you know. Uh, I don't even know how many he caught last year, but you know he's always gonna catch his passes, you know, 80 plus. You know what I'm saying? So for to get 40 more for another tight end sounds ridiculous, I know, but I think he has that kind of talent where he can contribute to the team. I hope that he's given that opportunity. Now, if it's just the fact that the Ravens don't play him, he can't do that much about that. You know what I mean? So I want to see him on the field get the opportunity to play. All right, um, fourth round pick 141. Demarion Pepe Williams. Now, Pepe Williams is a cornerback that has um, Marcus Peters-like aggression on the field. Uh, it's already videos of him talking trash to his teammates, getting the energy up. He's a energy guy. He brings that energy to the squad, right? Now, he might have to make his name on special teams, all right, to start out. So if he can play special teams, do it effectively, get on the field and punt coverage, and kickoff coverage and, you know, make plays, great. Uh, I would love to see him get some uh, some run actually on the field with that cornerback just because, I mean, the Ravens will have to rotate. He could end up being a guy who goes up a little bit higher than uh, Jalen Armour Davis, you know, and to kind of take over that fourth, fifth cornerback role. Because you got to remember, Brandon Stevens is still here too as well, so he could be in that fourth cornerback role as well. But as far as Pepe Williams, um, if he could be a special teams contributor, if he can make a couple plays when he does get chances, if he gets chances to play cornerback, um, and like I said, I'm saying this for every defensive player, tackle. Please, tackle. So if he can do that, good season for Pepe Williams. All right, last but not least, Tyler Beatty, six-round pick, number 196. Now, this is the first Raven uh, draft pick that was signed this season. And if J.K. and Gus are not ready week one, he could have a big role this year. Tyler Beatty um, led the SEC in rushing, I believe, and he can also catch the ball. So when you have that play with that kind of pedigree, that kind of background, what I want to see from Tyler Beatty this year is just that. I want to see him being an all-around effective weapon um, if J.K. and Gus cannot go. If they cannot go, for me, Tyler Beatty needs to be lead dog. I know, I know they signed Mike Davis and things like that, but Tyler Beatty has a more impressive skill set already than Mike Davis has right now. All right, Mike Davis can be... You're a power back, short yardage guy. If we have to go with, you know, that one-two combo, that's fine. But Tyler Bay needs to be on the field to catch passes, run the ball in between the tackle, um, outside zone, things like that. Tyler Bay needs to be able to do that. Now, if J.K. and Gus are healthy, ready to rock and roll week one, like, like uh, J.K. said, he expects to be back. I think Gus Edwards is on target for training camp and for week one as well. Tyler Brady's role is obviously going to be severely reduced if that's the case. So if J.K. and Dust are ready to go, then, you know, Tyler Brady, if he can come in, 
Um, give those guys a breather, not fumble, kind of like Tyson Williams. And uh, just being an effective third running back, that's good. You know what I mean? Uh, but if those guys are hurt, I expect I expect big things from Tyler Bailey. I really do. I can see him in that first, say, if it's four weeks of the season before, you know, they, they, those guys are ready, four, six weeks before, before those guys are ready. If Tyler Bailey can average something like 60 to 80 yards from scrimmage a game, that's a good start to the year. Now, those guys, like I said, they're healthy. His role is going to be severely reduced. If he can just contribute in some way, then, you know, good for Tyler Bailey. Um, but those are my expectations for the Ravens rookie this year. The Ravens have a really deep and talented rookie class, and I think they had 11 selections. And really, I expect to see 10 of them playing at some capacity. The only guy, like I said, I don't expect to be on the field is Philele. Uh, if he gets on the field, it's probably because of an injury. Um, so to have your whole rookie class expect to be contributors and guys who play, that's a good rookie class. Um, so uh, that's my expectations for that rookie class. And uh, this is your boy Gabriel. Just know the fan TV. I'm out.